You can ask any pregnant woman, those last few weeks of pregnancy can be uncomfortable, a little bit rough, but what if you had to stay pregnant longer than 40 weeks? I'm talking a lot longer. Check this one out. This is Lauren. Lauren is a paralegal at a small law firm in Denver. And she is 260 weeks pregnant. And five days. And nine hours. Not that she's counting. Lauren can't afford to take time off work to have her baby, so she's decided to just stay pregnant. Neither Lauren or her husband have paid family leave. He used up his vacation days caring for his elderly mother, so she's stockpiling her vacation and sick days so she can give birth when her baby is six years old. You're so cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah. They talked about moving to a country that does have paid family leave, which is almost every country except the United States. But Lauren isn't allowed to fly since 2012. <laughs> Keeping a toddler in your uterus is a challenge. But she tries to think of it as extra bonding time. And since the US is the only developed country that doesn't have paid maternity leave, Lauren just has to keep the kid in. Besides, what's a better option? America having a national paid leave policy? That's crazy. Funny. It's not like, how are we still having this conversation in 2017? Did you see that statistics? Like 86% 80. of U.S. citizens have jobs without paid maternity leave. Well, that said, like, from my culture, like, from a cultural standpoint, being Mexican, um, I had my kids C-section, mm -hmm. and two, three weeks later, there was no time. It's like, we're raised, have your baby, get, get going, you have to start providing. There's no time to take that time. And also because we don't want to deal with a lot of the depression, so that we're raised in such a different way. So to see that, that, I mean, for me, it's not something that's completely shocking. Is there benefits to that? I think there is. It'd be so much nicer to be able to spend quality time at home, not worry, worry economically, um, to be able to give that time to your kids. And then depression-wise, I mean, I think you would have that time to not only heal, but just feel better and connect with your but I mean, question. I mean, the studies show that that initial bonding with, with with mom and, and her, her newborn is, I mean, it's it's important. Why is this a thing? Well, the, why it's it is the way it is. It's because our system puts the onus, the burden of paying for this, to the employer and all these other countries. It's subsidized by the government, and they pay for maternity leave. What does that translate? Your taxes are gonna be higher. This puts a huge burden on employers, not only financially paying them, but they lose that person in the workplace. And if you have a relatively small business, it may be difficult for you to survive. There is a sweet spot here where everyone wins. I just don't think that we have found it, obviously, in this country, because you have to, you have to think about all players in this. And, and I, I do think it's a shocking statistic, and I think this PSA is very effective at its stated goal, which is to raise awareness. And this is one of those things where ultimately, since there are no federal laws, until something like that is legislated, yes. if it is on the onus of the small business owner, you're gonna continue to see, I think that we said 86%, and... But what does that say about us as Americans? Think about all the taxes we pay, and think about, like, how that well, money is yeah, allocated. Well, we like, don't want it, we, I mean, with that's the thing is... where they're giving a year for the mom and a year for the dad, their, their taxes are, like, 50%. Well, maybe not a year. But that, six, I mean, six weeks. So, I mean, it's, it would come at a price.